Hi everyone. Hi. So today we're going to be doing a um, another playthrough of our Stormcast Eternals game, and again it's going to be the Battle of yeah. Gur. So we are playing with the Stormcast Eternals and the Sylvaneth as always, and for the Eagle Eye viewers you will notice that the Branch Witch at the front of the Sylvaneth army has actually lost its paint. The reason for that is we've actually sent off um, George's Start Collecting box to Titus Miniature Painting to be commissioned along with the um, Ever Queen. So the next time you see them on the channel, which will be around the time of the Battle of Go, they will be all fully painted professionally. And yeah, we'll do a yeah. quick showcase video to see how that good they look. Well. So today's mission is um, mission number three from the Battle of Gehur box set, um, well, event pack, uh, the Warhammer World exclusive one. It's kill for the living. Basically what you've got to do. That sounds a bit like. A bit like what? No, it's like kill for the living. Well, you've got to kill everything, haven't you? Yeah. Basically, it's kill points. You, uh, For every four unit you kill, you gain a point. So I can gain three points from your army. You can get, what, four points from mine? So you've got the advantage. I suppose, in a way. So yeah, um, we'll quickly go over the forces as always. We have the Branch Witch, 16 Dreads and a Tree Lord. It's not Tree Lord Ancient, it is going to be played as a Tree Lord. So Georgie can use her formation, which means that every turn she can get a Dread back and the Branch Witch and the Tree Lord both regain wounds, which is really powerful, as we found to out. To use it. Yeah, you just got to remember to do it. <laughs> and I've changed up my prosecutors again. They're going to be running with two celestial hammers and a great axe to try and cleave down that big blob of 16 dreads and actually deal with like skeleton hordes and stuff like that. I'm just trying to find a way of making prosecutors actually useful. <laughs> um, it feels like liberators and retributors are the yeah, best you ones. Look. You're lining them off a bit better. Yeah, but look, 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 he's, uh, look where his head's facing now. His head's facing over here now. Oh, yeah, so you've just made him one key. Aww. Aww. Yeah. Five liberators, two retributors with hammers, and a Lord Celestine. And again, we've got some more paint on them now. The liberators are done apart from their bases. Uh, the retributors, I've just finished getting the first layer of the highlight gold on, and then I've got to do the edge highlights, and then it's onto every other colour. Yeah, and the Lord Celestine's finished, and then it's onto the prosecutors to get ready for the event. Mm. So. That's enough rambling on from us. I know you guys were eager to see the game, so we'll get the train and everything set up, and we'll be right back after deployment. And we're back, and as we quickly survey the field, as you can see, we've got everything fully deployed. So, if I quickly go over where the Stormcast have placed everything, we have the Liberators in the front, the Prosecutors on the, the right flank, Lord Celestin on the left, and then we've got a small group of Prosecutors. And on the other side of the field, if we have a look at the Sylvaneth, as you can see, we have the Tree Lord hanging out in the centre. Yep. The Dreads on my right hand side, George's left. And in the, again, in the reverse, we have the Branch Witch on my left and George's right. To so the Tree Lord. It's a bit tiny, isn't it, when you think about it? it can, well, compared to that uh, Tree Lord, it is very tiny. Yeah, you're right. So. Uh, now we're gonna get on with a rolling to see who goes first as always. So that'll be me. Yeah. Uh, for those interested, Georgie did win the roll off for the uh, battle round uh, for the deployment first. She played the Tree Lord first. I placed my Liberators. She placed a uh, Branch Witch. I placed my Prosecutors. She placed her Dreads. I placed my Celestin and then the Prosecutors. So we will now roll off to see who is stealing battle round one. Here we go. So I rolled a one. Oh, it's you rolled a one. Well, okay, okay, I guess it's cocked. What's going <laughs> Go on then. And ah. two. So, uh, I got one for it. are you going first or second? Obviously, first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Obviously, eh? <laughs> <laughs> right, so we'll be right back at the end of Sylvaneth Battle Round 1. Right, and we're back, and as we quickly survey the field, we can see that the Sylvaneth have pushed up. So the only thing they pretty much did this turn was cast a Mystic Shield on the Dreads. And then they just moved them around, didn't you, George? Yeah, because that was useless, yeah, it was really. Mm. So as yeah, this is just a standard kill people mission, it's pretty much a case of just getting as close as you can and... Yeah, just... Get in there. Yeah, and kill stuff. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, we'll be right back at the end of Stormcast Eternal's Battle Round 1. Right, and we're back, and as we quickly survey the field, the entire Stormcast Eternal's formation, as you can see, has shifted to the left. So, yeah, so the reason why I've done this is whilst I've been playing these Battle of Gur missions, and just, I've just been throwing my armies directly at George and wonder, and just basically getting into combat as quickly as I can. I've also tried doing some outflanking maneuvers, as you've seen in previous battle reports where I've pushed up the flank. Uh, I've tried doing all sorts, but this time around I thought I'd be clever and actually play like a towel. So I pulled my formation over, trying to get a good line of, uh, line of sight blocking from the um, branch bridge, so no arcane bolts will come at me. The Lord Celestine has sneakily placed himself and used his cloak, firing two shots at the branch bridge through that building. As you can see, if I quickly bend down, you can see him clearly through the building just there. So he's caused two wounds to him, mortal wounds, and then the two prosecutors also threw their hammers, causing two for, uh, uh, two more wounds, was it? Yeah. So the branch witch is now down to one wound. But well, she'll see it back up to two, won't she? Yes, on your turn. Yeah. Now we do have to roll off. Oh, yeah. Ah, so it could oh, be my no. turn now. Come on, you kill it. Yep, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> go. Well, mine's cocked. Unless you want to re-roll both of them. No, no, no you want me to re-roll mine. Here we go. I'm actually pretty good at making four ups, you know. I play tile. You ready? No. Oh. Are you going first or second? <laughs> okay, we'll well, be right. Position. Yeah, we'll be right back then at the end of Sylvaneth turn two. Right, and we're back. And as we quickly survey the field, Georgie has not done anything other than cast some spells and moved up. So, as you can see, her entire dread formation has pushed forward with a good run. They've actually made it ten inches forward. Uh, the branch witch managed to cast Mystic Shield on them, so now they are on a 3 plus save. Yep. And then she pulled the branch witch and the tree lord behind the dryads, forcing me to deal with the dryads. Okay. Which, uh, yeah, is interesting to say the least, because now I've got to try and get through 16 dryads with a 3 plus save that are going to make me hit them on one point less. Yeah, they're pretty difficult to deal with, actually. So. Uh, yeah, we'll move on to Stormcast Eternal's turn two. Uh, I've got to try and figure out what I'm going to do about this now. Right, we're back. And the Stormcast have actually unleashed hell on the Sylvaneth. So, let's quickly go over, over what happened then. So, first of all, the, everything moved over and my prosecutors jumped into this building here on the flank of the dreads we moved our formation up to here just across and then i used my celestine to throw his cloak hammers at the branch witch managing to score two more wounds killing it outright which was good and then we decided to help with it and we charged in with everything so retributors went in first liberators went in second the Celestine went in third and the Prosecutors came in on the flank to the rear. And from then on, uh, my turn being first, so I chose to attack with the Retributors. They scored one with Blast to Ash and that was it. So they killed two models. Uh, the Dreads then attacked back onto the Retributors, causing one wound to them. Some attacked onto the Liberators, causing none. Some attacked the Celestine, causing none. Some attacked the Prosecutors, causing none. So it was quite a bit of a messy one, but when we worked it all out, we lost one wound on the Retributors. Mm. Then the Liberators attacked, killing one model. The um, Celestine attacked, killing... I think he killed two, didn't he? Yeah. So two, one... Uh, no, no, Liberators killed two. They killed two. He killed two. And these guys did absolutely nothing because yeah. I hate prosecutors. They are so rubbish, it's unreal. I've even tried giving them the Great Axe. Great Axe of four attacks, didn't do anything. Maybe it's just me. 
Uh, yeah, so that means they lost six models. Being bravery six, George rolled a dice, rolled a three, and lost three further models. Yeah. So they're down to that now. We lost a prosecutor over here. Oh, sorry, I didn't mention that. Um, the Dreads actually did manage to bring down a prosecutor. Yeah, um, we we managed to bra uh, pass our bravery. Um, obviously, we needed to roll a six to lose anyone. We rolled a two, so we was good. <laughs> so that was the end of battle round two. Now we have to roll a dice. So well, I, I could like I could go first. All right. Because you went first, didn't you? Moved everything up, and then I pushed up. We'll get it right yes. this time. Don't worry. <laughs> right, you ready? Yeah. All right, go. Three and four. Oh, I'll take it. You go first. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we'll be right back then at the end of Sylvan F Battle Round Three. Right, and we're back, and as we quickly survey the field, we can see there's not really much left on the field at all. So, um, what happened then? Well, Georgia moved a branch, uh, a tree lord, sorry, three, uh, more than three inches away from the force. You tried your strangling roots, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, you actually managed to take two wounds off the Celestin and charged into combat, did a ground stomp, didn't do anything. Oh. Rubbish on the morning. Yeah, you failed on all of that, but then you did do your impaling talons and took the Celestin down to one wound. And unfortunately, the last attack failed to wound on the two plus, so he survived. Because I didn't fancy trying to make a minus two sa um, yeah, so now save. I've, now I've got to try and survive your next turn, and then if you go first again, I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. in other news, the Dreads attacked the Retributors, killing one of their number. Yep. And he then swung back uh, with three attacks, rolled two sixes and a five, so instantly four models died. And then Georgie needed a six plus save to make with her Dread, or she'd have lost another two, but made the save. And these guys moved over trying to attack, did nothing because re and prosecutors are absolutely useless. And the Celestin attacked the tree log, causing a wound. These guys rallied in and didn't cause any wounds at all, made both the saves. So I've just remembered something, we need to do a battle shock for your dreads. Oh. So you're, you need yes. to roll a dice, you need a six, um, ten, uh, no not ten, sorry, you're bravery six aren't you? Yes. Yeah, so you lost four models, yeah. which means you start on a four, roll a dice and add it to four. If it goes over six, you lose more models. So you lost four. Yeah. That means you lose an extra model. Right. Because you went to bravery seven. So one model dies. Where's you? So that number's now down to two. <laughs> there you go, more. some, li some live recording. Two more, and then you'll have uh, another point. Mm, so I've got one point on the moment. There? We have actually noticed that we've been doing something wrong again. Uh, you will go over that at the end of the game. But it's a learning curve, that's why we're doing these ready for when we get to one more, isn't it? It is. That's right. It's perfect, isn't it? So it's still battle round three and it's time for the Stormcast to have a go. We'll be right back. Right, and we're back again. And as you can see, the numbers have thinned again. So at the start of my turn... Well, mine have yours, haven't Yeah. I pulled my Lord Celestin out of combat and run him away a little bit so he can survive because I didn't want the Three Lord killing him. Uh, that way this turn I can actually charge in and actually do something with him before he dies. The Retributor swung his hammer, 1-6, 2 dead dreads. Got a campfire going. And <laughs> <laughs> these guys these guys charge in. Georgie did make a stomp this time and they failed to wound. And that is pretty much it. So it's now into battle round 3. So we're going to roll to see who goes first in battle round 4. I want to go first. 1-3. Bloody hell. First again, eh? <laughs> so then, we'll be right back after the Tree Lord has tried to kill some Liberators. Yep. And we're back, and as we quickly survey the field, not much has changed other than the fact that the Tree Lord is now on three wounds instead of one. It's all Yep. So, um, after messing around and actually getting the rules correct this turn, uh, not really much has happened. Uh, we attacked causing two uh, and Tree Lord attacked causing none. So we will now move on to Stormcast turn four. We'll be right back. Right, and we're back. Yeah. I'm gone. Nothing left. Oh, it was like 
when we left. And like, mm, okay. Yeah. So what happened on the field then? So the Liberators um, were already in combat, as you know. The Prosecutors moved their full 12 to get behind, threw the hammers and charged in. Retributor came up and made the charge as well, and they kept the uh, Lord Celestine back. Lord Celestine used his cloak, threw some hammers in there, causing a couple of wounds. Uh, those guys, the Retributor, uh, Prosecutor, sorry, actually managed to do a wound with that axe for the first yeah. time ever. <laughs> Liberators then actually managed to cause some wounds, and then finally, the Tree Lord had two wounds left. The heroic Retributor came in with his massive hammer, swung away, didn't score any sixes, only caused one wound, and his minus one men meant the Tree Lord had a four plus save, and Georgia rolled a three. So, two damage. Yeah, we've got a nice big campfire tonight. You should pick up some of your own size, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh yeah, that Lord's like four times the size of him. Why can't you just like walk and squash him all? <laughs> Well, he was trying to. Yeah. He did knock them down, didn't he? What, his high, what his high Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did do the ground stomp. Uh, we wasn't forgetting about that. He ground stomped. Only the liberators were affected. The prosecutors and the uh, retributor was fine. So, that is the end of the game. Uh, a tabling for the Stormcast Eternals. Good game handshake, yep. left-handed, because I'm holding the camera. Yep. Uh, we scored three points on the luminals of victory. And, yeah, so, Georgie. What did you think of that game? It was pretty good, really. Hmm. I, 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 need to, I need to write a list so I can get used to doing it all in the order. Yeah, so you keep looking at your list. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you get it's someone who's fair. a bit of a dick out of the day, you're yeah. going to be you're gonna have a problem, aren't you? I think it was a pretty fair game then. Hmm, it was. I think so. What did you think to the new strategy that I've come up with? Whereas I just oh, I think it was pretty good. keep myself together I think and that's then. That's what helped you because if you just come, it might have been taken differently if you just charged in. Mm, well, so wait for you to get close enough to charge and yeah, then went got, with everything yeah, rather than... Yeah, I managed to get rid of my branch which is pretty early, so she didn't get to do it. The problem with me is I've been playing 40k for so long, which each individual unit is actually pretty bloody decent. Those prosecutors are rubbish. They don't do it. Do they? Just maybe they could game. do something if I charge them into, say, your branch witch. Maybe. Or maybe some skeletons or something like that, but against your Sylvanas, they are absolutely rubbish. <laughs> they just don't do anything. Uh, so yeah, I think that is the strategy for this game. Just keep myself together, make them do That's the really charge. That was a pretty good strategy that was. I think it mm. worked. Well, I had to draw you to me, didn't I? I kept myself out of well, line so of sight so you well, could cast. If we're no good if I did the same, because I would have on the go just doing nothing, wouldn't we? I no, I baited you in, didn't I? Yeah, you so did. that was a good strategy that was. So yeah, um, that didn't do too bad. Um, rules sure. that we got wrong. Yeah. Uh, we're still not getting the branch, uh, the dreads right, are we? No, so we still need to get them right. We still need to remember to do the bring wounds back and models yeah, back thing. I think on the next game I should bait you in. You bait me in? You're going to try? Well, it's <laughs> going to be a bloody long game. <laughs> get the event pack and we'll have a look at what the next one's called. So, what have we... Oh, look, there's our new chair. What number <laughs> is it? It'll be number four now. What crumble beyond recognition? Recognition. Oh my god, that sounds horrible. Alright, pass it here then. And we'll show it on camera so we can get a good look. Back to the video for work again. Okay, so crumble beyond recognition. If I get the camera in it, so I'm actually not looking at it. Uh, it says, at the start of each player's hero phase, that player rolls a d6 for each friendly unit or friend unit on or within two inches of a terrain priest that isn't a forest. On a two plus, that player scores one numeral of victory. On a roll of a one, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. Ouch! That is painful as oh. Jeez. So you you got you gotta stay close to the terrain, but if you roll a one, you could kill your entire unit. You know what I'm looking forward to? What's that? Actually having the trees for the terrain. Oh right, like yeah. Proper game. Mm hmm Well we've got um uh Titus miniature painting painting your stuff. We can always send over some trees at some point as well with the next mm. load. I mean New Orcs are next in line, aren't they? They're due for November. So, yeah, we're going to have to do another shout out for the chap over at Tysus Miniature Painting. Um, he's actually helped us out quite a lot. He is actually very busy at the moment. He's all booked up and everything until October 23rd, which is when we were planning on getting the yeah, 
Oh, the guy. Yeah, when we was getting the, what was it, the Everqueen painted. Yeah. However, due to problems we've been having recently with hospitals and all that sort of stuff, Georgie's not been able to paint your silver enough, have you? No. So it wasn't looking like we was going to actually make it to the event. However, um, I do chat to, um, I believe his name is Simon, uh, quite often on Facebook, getting loads of advice from him on the YouTube yeah. channel and all that sort of stuff. And we mentioned that we was getting a bit behind and he's very kindly offered to actually put in a few extra hours to get the models done so we could actually still attend the event. So the guy is absolutely amazing, yeah. like he's, he's eager to help you. Uh, I mean at the end of the day, let's, let's be fair, he's getting paid for it. <laughs> Um, but still, for him to go out yeah, of his way and that. actually say, do you know what, I'll put in the extra hours because he didn't have to, did he? No, not really. So, he's a really nice guy. I highly recommend anyone who wants to get he any commission really stuff done. He Yeah, well, he said he does. He, he's, he's, uh, all the conversations I've had, he said he loves it. So, That's I suppose if you love it. It's even better though, isn't it? Yeah. Paid, it's... Yeah. So, as soon as all them models come, we will have a showcase. I'm going to yeah. get us a light box so we can actually take some proper photos of it. So I just need to find one that's cost effective. Um, and yeah, so we'll get um, some photos taken, show you guys his work. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the dreads and everything were part painted by us, so it's not going to be up to the amazing standard which you can you do. You part painted by me. Yeah, well, okay, yeah. Well, I sprayed most of them. You yeah. painted, le you painted tiny little that, bits. That bad, <laughs> yeah, it's, they weren't. They were really good. So yeah, but the yeah, but he's actually going to go to town on the Ever Queen, isn't he? He's going to make it look absolutely fantastic. It's going to be amazing to actually have a professionally painted model in our display cabinets for once. I mean, when I actually quickly pan uh, to here, this is where we pretty much keep all the painted stuff. So we've got the Raptors, uh, more Raptors, and then we've got the Raven Guard. This is pretty much the best painted army that we've got with the exception of the half-painted towel, which we currently have as well. Yeah, but they're really good, they are. You just got to finish off. Mm, yeah, I've just got to finish them off and get on with the army. But I'm um, suffering at the moment, because Georgie doesn't know this, so wait for a reaction. Here it comes. Uh, I've actually wanted to start a new army again. Oh. <laughs> what, 40k? Yeah. You don't know which one to start? Yeah, uh, no, I do know which one I want to start. Go on then. You ready? Yeah. Imperial Guard. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. You, you actually mentioned that for a while ago, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Is that Sheen's army? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was actually listening yeah. to an audiobook and they were talking about how they all come together and it was really cool and I was yeah. like, oh, I want that army. So, what, what, do, what do you think? Yeah, let's see what up. Should I get the starter Who's box? Been? Yeah, you could do And then we could have it's it on the battle of the box. box. Well, it's a tank, which is, a, is good because it's a tank. Oh, I'm not in the army based on tanks, or am I thinking of a different one? No, you're thinking of the right one. Think, um, think modern day infantry, yeah. with tanks and all the rest of it, set in the far future where there's aliens that could kill them by looking at them. Yeah. So, the, okay, here we go again. We always end up having like lore in these videos somewhere, don't we, where I'm explaining yeah. the lore to you. Yeah. So here we go it's then. Interesting, so, yeah. background story for you. The, you know you got the Space Marines and the Imperium, you got the Imperium of Man. Every, all the yeah. humans and everything are under one banner. Well, most of the humans are under one banner. Yeah. Some of them like go renegade and everything, but on, enough on that later. Um, you've got, essentially, two major factions. The first is the Space Marines, which you know. Space Marines, they're yeah. elite, they're yeah. super soldiers and all the rest of it. Yeah? Oh. They're classed as the sword. There's a precision strike which goes straight to the heart. They're in, they're out, jobs are good at, yeah? yeah? The Imperial Guard are the sledgehammer. They go in with so many bloody numbers that they drown you in their blood. Ugh. So, that is how many yeah. they throw at you. It's their entire tactic is, oh we've lost loads of men, throw more at them. So when you think like the tower fighting them. The tower firing and firing in their orderly ranks, blowing tanks up left, right and centre. Do you know what the Imperial Guard do? They strap a sword to the end of their gun and charge at them. Why would they shoot the gun? Uh, well, it's a bayonet, it's an underneath, it's an, you know like the World War II ah, guns where they got the sword underneath. <laughs> yeah, they, they call it fixing bayonets and they just charge in. Yeah. Well, it's all propaganda and everything. They're, they're conditioned to think that the tower's weaponry 
Their guns are nothing more than lights and they don't do anything. They're totally harmless. Like, for example, what are uh, orcs, yeah? yeah? They are taught that orcs are weak, dumb, and not a threat, basically. And there's a load of other things to tell them, and I think. But what orcs are actually like is, if an orc gets to close combat with them, he will grab hold of his arm, pull it off, beat him to death with his arm, oh, beat his mate to death yeah. with his arm, <laughs> take their gun, and probably throw it at someone else, killing him as well. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, they're totally brainwashed into all this. Yeah, they ain't got a clue in it. And, just... is something even worse? What? Now, imagine this. You've got a massive demon prince. Like that big one down yeah. there that we played with. Great axe. Now, think that this thing is tall. Yeah. Like, when you look, if it was in person, we're talking, like, taller than a double-decker bus tall. And he's got an axe as tall as him. Worse, that's even worse. And he's, he's got big, massive, bloody wings. He flies, he roars at you, he stinks like oh, death. Wouldn't you have more than one of them in, in, the, in the battle? No. Well, yeah, you would, in a big battle. There would be more than one. And they swing this massive axe, just cleaving. It literally doesn't stop. It just goes straight for everything. But couldn't he end up killing his own people? Well, yeah, but it doesn't give a crap. <laughs> No, blood for the blood god, they call yeah. it. Schools for the school phone is thrown. He's there to kill. That's it. Kill right. Machine. Now back to the point. An Imperial Guard unit of people like me and you have got essentially cardboard on. Yeah, or uh, a <laughs> modern on. modern day bulletproof vests. Yeah. yeah, what do you think that's gonna do to a laser beam? Nothing. Exactly. So they're wearing stuff like that, and they've got this thing that's bigger than a double decker bus coming at them with a massive axe roaring at them and they've just seen it crush about four tanks and decapitated an entire squad with a swing of its axe. Yeah? yeah. So you just expect any normal person to shit his bricks Turn and then that, run. Stop the way, yeah. But it's like, hmm. Do you know why they get, keep going at him? Because there's one guy at the back of that unit called a commissar and he's got a gun and if you turn around he'll shoot you in the face. So either way you're going to die. Yeah. They are more scared of that one dude who's probably like hunched over. He's got a little cane. He looks like a gremlin. He's a bit, he's a total douchebag. And there's got this fucking massive demon in front of him, the size of a boss, charging at him. And he's scared more of that demon. Turn around and die. I'll go forward and die. Yeah. How do you want to die? forward for the Emperor. <laughs> Basically, like I said, their entire strategy is to throw bodies at until there's enough people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a good meme on the internet that says the Commissar has ran out of people to shoot so he started shooting people from other units. <laughs> so basically these guys stand at the back, all the men run forward, die, and he's like, oh, well, this guy's a chicken shit, I'll shoot him instead. <laughs> and that actually represents in the rules as well. You know when you make morale checks, your yeah. leadership test to see yeah. if the shit themselves will run away, if you fail, there's a special rule which means the Commissar shoots someone and then you get to re-roll. So you literally lose a model because he shoots someone in the head because they're running away and then you get to re-roll. Lovely. So how about that, eh? And that's just a little scrape along the top that they are that terrified that's of this one little it. dweeb at the back of their army who's a little chicken shit himself shooting people than they are of a bumming demon the size of a double-decker bus. I would pass out. Yeah. <laughs> and think of it, Tyranids. Massive bio titans the size of skyscrapers. These guys are more scared of this little dweeb at the back of their unit than they are of that tyrant. That's how badly their minds have been fucked up. <laughs> but that's 40k law. 30k is a bit different. They're a bit more normal, I suppose. For, uh, 40k, they, they fear everything. And the, tr uh, the, t uh, the taught to think that everything's weak against them. Like a, a tile railgun. They, they're taught that it does nothing, but do you know what a tower railgun actually does? What? It will punch a hole straight through the tank and out the other side and then explode it. In one oh, shot. So and I they're see. taught that it's just magical light shows that don't do fucking anything. It's weak technology. Like you've played against Tau, you know how brutal they are. An Imperial Guardsman is told that they're not like that at all, that the pusses, they don't do anything. Just fish cows. They go walk around going moo and grazing on the grass. So not too bit. Like weird that they're not quite right to believe it anyway wouldn't they what a condition 
they recruited from a world and they're just taught that over and over and over again. Like here's an example. If they're sucked into space, yeah, yeah. they are told that they are to recite a prayer to the emperor, their god, yeah. and hold his breath and wait for rescue. It said that that prayer will keep him alive and will allow him to hold his breath long enough for rescue. Now, do you know what happens? Actually, happens when you get sucked into space. Die straight away. Pretty much, yeah. You, your entire body like turns into a freaking ice cube and blows up. It's not nice what happens to you when you go into space yeah. at all. The look, you know, you can't hold your breath. The air is ripped out of your lungs. Yeah, so you get sucked out, and he's like, "Pray to the." Pretty much. So, yeah, you can see <laughs> 40k law is amazing. I need to do some videos on it or something. Oh, that's funny. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm thinking about doing that army mainly because it's one of those armies. You know, like when I put my, my Necron collection out and it fills the entire board. Uh, for the, Again, going back to the viewers again, guys. Uh, when I actually f um, put my t Necron collection out, I filled end to end of this board and still had about three foam trays full of yeah. warriors that I couldn't fit into. Yeah. I've actually got a lot of Necrons. Now, Imperial Guard, their armies are like that. But you know how I had a lot of space around my army where yeah. I physically couldn't fit anything? Imperial Guard fit tight. Well, I've seen what Shane's like. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. Well, he's got about... And he's got about 18 Lehman Russ. He's got a Bane Blade. He's, yeah. he's got an army. He's got about 12k worth of Imperial Guard. Yeah, when he did that game at Warhammer, that massive... It was oh massive. yeah, when it was my Necrons. Yeah, yeah this is a story for you guys, this is a good one. I know we're rambling on, sorry, um, for those of you who are still with us, thank you for sticking around and listening yeah. to us ramble. You guys are awesome. So anyway, on to the story. We had a massive 40,000 point game of 40k. Yeah. By design, we actually chose to do 40k or 40k in an apocalypse game, 20k aside. Uh, on Georgie's side of the table, there was five players. Obviously, this is at Warhammer World on one of their massive display I wasn't boards. Playing, no, you wasn't. Was two? And then it was me and my brother on our side. Now we was playing the heretics, as it were, because they wanted to all play Imperium and the good guys. So we thought, screw it, then we'll bring the heretics. So my brother bought how many? He brought. 12,000 points of Traitor Guard and Chaos Demons, <laughs> corn. And I bought, uh, no he bought 11k, I bought 9k of Necrons. And my army wasn't looking so great, it's like I had a few big stuff on the table, I had the pile on the massive thing. Yeah. But all of a sudden my flyer showed up, do you remember? Oh yeah, all them flyers! <laughs> yeah, you got loads, didn't you? They just stop. I put... 12 night sights on the table, all full of 15 warriors a pop and uh, three doom sights as well. I filled the table yeah. end to end with flyers. Did you actually win? Yeah, we did. Shane killed a, um, what was it, a Warhound Titan with Nurglings. <laughs> yeah. Uh, backstory in that for you guys, we had uh, macro cannons on the actual table and we said if you infiltrate on them or get to them you can control them and use them as the actual rules. So my brother infiltrated Nurglings onto a macro cannon and fired it at any, a Warhound Titan and killed it in its first shot. <laughs> he wasn't happy, well the guy who owned it, he really wasn't happy. So anyway, that's enough rambling and then um, a bit of lore for you guys yeah. as well, so um, yeah. Yeah, I've got a question for you guys. If you want to hear any lore videos, I actually do have a lot of knowledge in it. So we could do something like this where I explain a certain topic to George and you can gauge your responses, have, have it a bit unique. So still got to do the bit where you teach me, yeah? Yeah, we're going to get on with that. Next week when I'm off for them four okay. days, we'll do it then. So yes, guys, next week, when we, um, from Wednesday, I'm off from, for four days. I've got Wednesday to Saturday, which is rare for me, as it stands at the moment. I've been working six days a week and yeah. each shift is about 11 to, uh, to 15 hours long. So we, we've been a bit struggling for time. So next week, when I'm off, we are gonna start our Learn to Play 40K. And first thing is gonna be going over the armies. So me and Georgie will sit down and we'll talk about the armies and yep. Georgie will give you some advice on how she chose her army because she is brand new. So another from another newbie, Val, you actually know 
how you chose, so you can give your advice, yeah. and I can give you the advice of an experienced person, mm -hmm. and then after that we will go over the basics, and then yeah, we've got list building all sorts. We've mentioned this before, haven't we? I'm sure we have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or, or was it in that other video? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, we've got plans, big plans. Hey. So just keep your eye out. Yes, keep yeah, your eye on the thing. channel. Yeah. And we have been rambling now for 20 minutes. So. <laughs> yeah. So. We'll shut up now. Yes, we will let you guys go. Enjoy your painting or whatever you guys were doing while you was watching this. And if you're just watching us ramble on, then even better. You guys are amazing. Yeah. So um, we love you all. Yes, we do. <laughs> Thanks very much for tuning in, guys. It's really appreciated. As soon as we hit that 250 subscriber mark, we will be doing another giveaway, and we have actually made a decision. Once we do go to that event, to the Warhammer World Opening Day on November 5th and 6th, I believe it is. Yeah, it's November. Well, it's not that long ago now, you know. Nice. It's only a little bit, uh, a month and a bit. Yeah. So like seven, six, seven weeks. So yeah, what we're going to do is, on these open days, there's always an exclusive model. So we're going to pick something up for you guys. We don't know what it is yet, because it's not been announced. But we're going to pick something up, and we're going to do a random giveaway. Yeah. It won't be something like, wait until we get a thousand subscribers or like that. It will be a random giveaway, and it will be on a random video to a, a, a commenter that basically makes us smile or something like that. Well, we, we don't know the details yet, but it, we will be doing a random giveaway with one of those Definitely, items. Yeah. And yeah, uh, well, as mentioned before, we are going to do coverage of that open day as well. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, we we've, got, yeah, we've got plans for it. Um, I'm actually considering borrowing a GoPro or something like that from my stepdad so I can actually record it. Don't know yet, but we're going to think about what we're doing. Right, Most of it's yeah. going to be done by pictures, isn't it? Because yeah. we're not allowed to actually record in the event. Uh, so we don't know quite know what we're going to do yet, but we will do full coverage of it. We'll get it from Basically, we're going to make it as if you're there with us to yeah. our best of our ability So you're going to be in the queue with us. You're going to be walking in getting eating your breakfast. tickets. Yeah, <laughs> eating breakfast Yeah, eating breakfast. Yeah. oh my god <laughs> So you can eat breakfast with us and all the rest of it and then we'll go We'll make sure we try and get coverage of all the pod works take pictures of everything for you So all the advice We'll take notes while we're actually there as well, so we can actually give you the advice oh, that they've been giving us. We? Oh yeah, but when we think about it, when we was there last time, we kind of ran out of stuff to do, didn't we? We was kind of hanging around waiting for the the more events, weren't one we? Pause, didn't have to be stuck yeah, time. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, well, again, we're rambling another fucking three minutes. We just rambled so on for. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks very much for tuning in, guys. I'll Remember, see you next time. yes, keep hitting that subscribe button. Once we hit yep. two fifty, we're going to do the giveaway. Uh, stay tuned for all the new content we've got planned. We will try and endeavour to not have any more delays on this channel. We we are uh, intensely sorry for everything that's gone on. Uh, life gets in the way eventually, doesn't it? It does. So, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.